We're at the Digital Insurance Agenda in Amsterdam. I'm talking to Constantine van Oranje, who just gave an introduction at the conference. I saw you in Groningen, where you gave a talk at the, uh, at the uh, hackathon for the blockchain, where a lot of old companies, or modern companies, ING, the Rabobank, and, and working together very nicely in teams with small companies. Was that an inspiration of how that can work in uh, practice? And, and can a technology like blockchain, which basically can disrupt or can help everybody to move in a new way, can that really uh, accelerate uh, things? I well, believe blockchain is very, um, is, is, is very, very tangible. And um, and then that can wake up a lot of uh, people in the industry. I think now it was nice to see there that that this hackathon uh, raised very interesting questions. For instance, uh, about pensions. Mm -hmm. When do you pay a pension? When do you need money? And maybe you don't only need money at the end of your life, but there are other periods where you need money. Um, what you know? How much do you pay into the system? Is it only money? Is it also you could maybe have credits you take care of people and then you maybe get some credits that other people take care of you when you're older so they were what was nice was that it blockchain was the the the, like the, the catalyst for rethinking um pensions you know and uh, who would have thought and that identity and yeah and then you had energy you had all kinds of subjects but uh, just to as a new frame frame of thinking apply to an old industry with uh, we know what we want to get out of it you know we want to be supported when we're old but we might also want to work longer when we're old. And so our pay system is, is maybe, maybe different. Maybe actually we start earning more. I know a lot of people that got out of their job and became a consultant and started earning more when they were pensioned than when they were in their last job. So um, yeah, because it's a different, it's, you know, a consultant fee is different than a salary. So, um, and, and that can be accommodated. And it's that for now it's not accommodated enough. You're talking here to about 700 executives of the incumbents and of the startups. What do they have to add to each other? Well, I think, um, like in many industries, the um, the uh, startups come up from much more from a digital technology perspective, and they have found new ways to deliver um, the same services or better services, um, but uh, to scale up uh, in a world that is uh, largely um, international or global. Um, you actually, or they, they, they can benefit a lot from the existing uh, incumbents, and the incumbents can benefit a lot from the innovations that come out of the startup. So, um, if they find ways to collaborate and listen to each other, uh, and don't uh, focus only on the one on disrupting the other and the other to crush the, the, the startups, then I think there's a lot of win win to be achieved. Yeah, there's a lot of collaboration, and, and uh, if you can basically improve the incumbents, that's way more interesting for the whole world because we need to go at scale. Okay. Then, secondly, you say we need to respect each other's culture. I mean, after you came a startup which talked about the, in, uh, the people who were un uninsured and unbanked and talking about the 4 billion people, uh, how do you see that in practice if you talk about uh, the, the, the incumbents working together with, uh, with the uh, startups? I think a lot of the, um, um, the benefits from uh, working with a startup is if you actually allow them to remain startups, or at least mean, uh, what I mean by um, allow them to be entrepreneurial, um, to pull them into um, a largely bureaucratic organization that is focused on optimization uh, is, is mostly very unhelpful. On the other hand, um, y a startup can't expect um, an incumbent uh, to be uh, agile, flexible, uh, you know, so um, they're all trying now. They're all having agile teams, and they're all working uh, in a new way. Yeah, and they have bean bags, and they have um, es espresso machines. Uh, but I think, um, and I think they are trying. But it's very difficult if you have twenty thousand people, company that you have to turn around. It often the the leaders are not trained to do it because you have to be a change manager. You have to be a, a, a leader in the traditional business, and then you have to kind of manage this transformation as well. So you have to. Um, uh, get people to do something they haven't done before, they maybe haven't been hired for, and you yourself as a leader don't haven't been in that role. So it's uh, it is really challenging, and there's therefore there's a lot of opportunity to learn from each other and to be open and to be surprised by each other, but also to take each other seriously. So very often you hear from the incumbents, oh, with this disruption, you know, it's uh, little startups and so, but it's the concepts that they uh, so it's maybe not the startup itself. But it's the concept, and you heard this as well. That, that you know, in other industries, where it could, could be in, in in print, for instance, or you know, print media, where they say, well, you know, this is small. Yes, but if the customer becomes accustomed to not paying for their content, mm -hmm. then that company might not disrupt you, but the movement will. So you'll have to deal with that new reality, and that only comes if you are open to that to the change and to the people that are driving that change. Okay. 
So I, I think if we look at the uh, the startups on the startup side, they also need to change quite a bit, right? I mean, they have an idea, they have a technical idea, they have a technical improvement, and they need to learn how to work with big companies yeah. and inside. You're now trying to set up to help um, improve the, the ecosystem we've built in Holland to help these work together. H how do you see that developing in the next uh, one or two years? Well, I think... Um Netherlands is a very organized country and sometimes we're a bit over organized and we have we have an organization for every sub interest and um, and if you want to innovate you need to have basically you find innovation at cross sectors or sections of, of, of sectors or so of disciplines. Um, so where we can we also maybe need to open up a bit. So it's not just organizing more but it's maybe organizing less. Um, it is about um, thinking again and this is I think the, the, this for me is that the most interesting thing about the whole startup movement is just really rethinking values and why are we doing this? You know, if you've got completely new ways of doing things, um, it's not really about the ways, but it's what you want to achieve. And, uh, and we had the old ways, and we have the old companies, and we have our old regulation. Um, and now we see that there are new ways. You have to think: you know, can we do the same thing or better with less? And, uh, and I think there are a lot of opportunities there. So that's what kind of keeps me. Me drive, you know, drives me. Less rules and less regulations in a country, for, for well, as the Netherlands, I mean, that is also... Uh, yeah, but I think the, the what's, what's, what's really um, good in the Netherlands, it's, uh, you know, we are um, a very mature economy with, um, in, with main players in nearly all of the different disciplines, sectors. Um, so we we are uh, we've got everything. We've yeah. got the universities. We've got the the the, 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 the science. We have got the infrastructure. You know, we can we can brag for 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 for, d for days about what what all of the good that's there. The only thing is we need to now kind of pull that together and we have to scale it and 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 allow new ideas to come to the fore. Also, we have to let go of our sometimes habit to want to equalize everything um, so you, you kind of you need to, to allow people to excel and uh, and that's and allow them to get the speed to excel and there we there we're still kind of uh, well we, we're not uh, let's say we're not in the lead yet we don't we don't have uh, that many entrepreneurs that are scaling at global at the global level and uh, and that's uh, it's also a matter of ambition we our ambition is nice. Last question. You've worked in big companies, you know, the big, huge companies in the financial industry, I think, and you're yeah. now working in small companies. What do you think of the difference in uh, how you operate? What, what, what suits you better? Or do you like to get them together? Uh, I, I like independence best. Uh, yeah. So um, um, I've, I've, I've set up my own little company with this, uh, and, and, um, and I actually thought about what kind of vehicle do I need for what I want to do. And do I need to build a company? What did the company do? Uh, it's consultancy, so we don't you don't need scale. You can do it as a, as you can do it on your own. Uh, the question is, do you try to attract other partners? Do you want to grow this? Um, and I didn't feel it was necessary for what I wanted to achieve. And I like my independence. So um, I worked in big bureaucracies, but always I tried to be in a small team, which had um, a lot of maneuver to uh, um, to be creative. So with when we were working at the European Commission with Nelly Kroos. We, um, we, yeah, we had a very, very uh, strong small team, um, and she was very willing to experiment. So we had uh, we had a lot of fun together, and uh, so I've always tried to be uh, relatively agile and small, even within bigger organizations. What is that with the family of Orange? You're very entrepreneurial. Your your nephew uh, Bernard is very entrepreneurial, and I meet I've met a lot of people who do a lot of things. Uh, is that is that a little bit in the culture? Well, I'm not that entrepreneurial. I mean, not like Bernard. Um, so I like independence. So I could be independent also in other areas. Um, but yeah, I think um, yeah, the good thing is, uh, and it's not just us, but we have a choice, you know. And our, our in our family, there's no um, there's no expectation, even also by the government, that we do formal roles. You have to kind of find the job, mm -hmm. so you can go into banking. You can do all kinds of things, but. Uh, um, at a certain point, you will want to maybe kind of, sort of do stuff yourself. Yeah. And Bernard was really, f really early because he did it and he started in his university times, and he's been extremely successful. And uh, and I commend him for it. And because uh, he always, I mean, it was a, a path that was not uh, not walked on before, and he uh, he just basically did it, and has been, and it's worked out really well for him. And uh, and so he kind of set the path for us, I guess, a bit. Inspirational. Thank you very much for doing this work.
Appreciate it. Good, thank you. Okay. Ik ben uh, degene die met Rutger uh, die blockchain congres uh,